So happy new month. I call February a month that God has decided to bless us. It's the second month in the year. And, um, you know, ending the month yesterday was a beautiful um, memory to me. And I want to believe for many others out there. But today, being the 1st of February 2024, it can just be God and just be God. And so on behalf of myself, my crew, my co-hosts, and everyone out there, we're saying glory be to God. We're grateful. We appreciate your goodness over our lives. On behalf of everyone, we say thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. <coughs> my name is Adejo Kiyadubi. David, my friends, call me Lori AJ. It's family and values, and um, it's all about who we are, what we stand for, and who we represent as a family. I'm not here alone because Darling Joy is right here beside me, so I'm not walking alone, by God. Oh, uh, yes. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Good morning. Happy new month to our esteemed viewers. Thank you for being our guest on the show. We started January on a working day. Mm. We ended January on a working day. We are starting <laughs> February on a working oh, day. Oh, what a That's day to tell you that that. This year is actually <laughs> a year of work, work, and God will definitely bless the works of our hands. Mm. So please know that it's serious business. When we started the year, we told you it was serious business, 2024. And that's what we've been doing since the year began. Yes, happy new month once again to you. Oh, we are glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for all your support, for the comments, the messages we are really grateful it's february and we are starting it again please we are streaming across all our social media platforms please download the galaxy mobile app so that you can watch us on the go and please the numbers on the screen they are for messages do not call won't pick your call just send us messages but we'll reply my name is joy abu and welcome to family and values yeah welcome to family and values mm. and family and values like i said it's all about you who do you represent mm. if you see joy or you see me outside now and we do anything out of um, you know, our out values of box, right out of our values you say ah but they are family and values from galaxy television <coughs> exactly. you know that is our platform that is where you know us from and if it's within the community mm. they'll say ah don't you know her She's the Abu daughter. Don't you know <laughs> Mr. Abu? I don't like that. Abu. <laughs> you know, you know? No, that's how they will refer to the refer. community. That's very true. Oh, you don't know Mr. Bello. That's our daughter. Yes. You know, they will mention where you originated from, your source, your parents, your family, your home. And that's why we, I always tell you that family, it's all about you and who you represent. No, now tell me, to you, what is February? February is all about love. When I came into the studio, I actually shared my, um, some, what I had with somebody. And the person said, oh, forgive me something. You take this one also. I was like, yeah, it's a season of love, you know. So February, um, we see it as a, as a time of, of sharing, mm -hmm. of love. Very soon you see the red flying everywhere. I can see the red <laughs> even on you. It's now, I decided you. to be colorful so that at least it will represent no, I can the still, most. No matter how colorful I can still, it's really showing on the white. This? <laughs> you are just, you know, I said I was going to do the red, but you went ahead to no, do I don't, I don't, I don't do the touch of red. I just to, not, just to indicate that, yeah, anyway. it's a new one, you know, I yeah. I will be angry. Right, it's I'll take it. it's of one love. of those things. No, 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 it's we one have, of those we have, things. We have more celebrations to come now. You know anyway, that. Yeah, February to mm. me also, I believe, is the time that um, love shows itself. Very true. Okay, it shows itself, it presents itself. And because it's the second month in the year also, um, it also shows that it's the, the continuity of what God started mm. from the beginning of the year. So we should just That's look true. forward to something good that God is going to do in your life, in my life, in our lives. And I tell you, you won't be disappointed because God will not fail you. Definitely. Yes. So we are going straight to business of the day. But right now we need to tell you to please our social media platforms and also the line on your screen. It's very important. Send messages. Don't call. Okay, so it's time for us to go for our mini features. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Personal hygiene. Personal hygiene includes cleaning your body every day, washing your hands with soap and water after going to the toilet, brushing and flossing your teeth twice a day, and covering your mouth and nose with a tissue 
or your sleeves when sneezing or coughing. It is important for people to practice good hygiene for many reasons, including reduced possibility of infection or disease, improved self-esteem, improved perceptions from others in our social groups. Be a role model by practicing good personal hygiene habits yourself, such as washing your hands and all this. Make it fun. Turn hygiene routines into enjoyable activities. Use colorful soaps, sing songs while washing your hands, and create a reward system for completing hygiene tasks. Hygiene refers to behavior that can improve cleanliness and lead to good health. Maintaining hygiene practice reduces the spread of illness and risks of medical conditions. It also increases self-confidence and positively impacts personal relationships. Keep reading for hygiene practices that helps contribute to your overall health and wellness. Poor hygiene is having bad or non-existent self-care that can lead to a messy appearance and health concerns. Having poor hygiene can be an indicator of all the problems like neglect. Generally, hygiene concerns should be resolved as quickly as possible. Research shows that washing hands with soap and water could reduce death from diarrhea disease by up to 50%. Researchers estimate that if everyone routinely washes their hands, one million deaths of a year could be prevented. A large percentage of foodborne disease outbreak are spread by contaminated hands. Good hygiene and wellness. Poor hygiene is having bad or non-existent self-care that can lead to a messy appearance and health concerns. Having poor hygiene can be an indicator of all the problems like neglect. Generally, hygiene concerns should be resolved as quickly as possible. Research shows that washing hands with soap and water could reduce death from diarrhea disease by up to 50%. Researchers estimate that if everyone routinely washes their hands, one million deaths of a year could be prevented. A large percentage of foodborne disease outbreak are spread by contaminated hands. Good hygiene practices include showering, brushing your hair, changing clothes, brushing your teeth, and staying clean. Bad hygiene can also be a symptom of nursing home neglect, so it's important to rule out any possible cause. Okay, so family and values and um, it's Galaxy Television. <laughs> this morning, we're looking at a very sensitive and important um, topic that concerns you, concerns me, concerns our children. Yes, our it concerns everyone. Parents, even everyone. the least of our babies, you know, it's all about each and every one of us and mm. so please we we'll want you to be part of it you can send in your questions and also you know support with any suggestions you have also likely suggestions that might help to you know buttress what we're discussing personal hygiene today is all about l talk so we're looking at personal hygiene how well do you clean yourself do you clean three times daily what areas are you missing out when we talk about cleaning, is he using the sponge or just using soap mm. and water? How well do you clean? Do you do it right? Even your, to your ears, is it right for you to use the cutting board to clean? Medically, some says the oil you see there has its, has you its, know, its own, protection yeah, it does, it does. to your ears. Yeah. So we'll be talking with our Zoom guest in person of Mrs. Yemi. She's a, a medical person. She's Yemi um, Ojo. Aromo Kudu, Yemi Ojo Aromo Kudu. She is an educational diag um, diagnostician, diagnostician and special needs consultant and also a consultant. She's joining us from Lagos Island. Good morning, ma'am. How are Good you? Good morning, morning, Yemi. Good morning, good morning, Joker. Good morning, Joy. It's a, it's a pleasure wow. to be here this morning. Yes. I love the radiance of this morning. Happy I, new I month. I love the radiance of this morning. Happy new month Happy to new you. Happy new month to you. Happy new month to you also. <laughs> okay, so how are our children doing over there? I hope they're doing great. Our children are doing extremely well. We thank God. Thank well done, ma'am. Well done for the good job you're doing. God will continue to strengthen and encourage you all the way. Okay, so we're looking at personal mm -hmm. hygiene. What is the personal hygiene? Hmm. Personal hygiene for me is, number one is personal. That's why I like the word personal hygiene. Okay. And it's keeping myself, you keeping yourself 
and your surrounding clean. Sometimes when we think about personal hygiene, we take away our surrounding. You can be clean if your surrounding is not clean, you are not clean. So personal hygiene is not just about the individual, but the surroundings where you are. And the reason why that is so that we can prevent sicknesses, diseases, and also to spread it. So good hygiene is about taking good care of your body, making yourself clean, and also keeping, keeping your environment very clean. For me, that is what is personal hygiene. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, you've just um, analyzed generally what is personal hygiene. Some people will say, "Okay, oh, fine, we've accepted. Uh, I keep my environment." But now let's talk about individuals. How often should we have our bath? Now this topic has been so debated because some people will say, "I'm always under the AC. I'm not dirty. I'm not smelling. So if I get back, sometimes I'm tired." But how often do you think? we should have our bath, considering our weather over here. I believe you have our bath twice, even if you're in the AC. Because when you leave your AC, you will get into your vehicle. Uh. That's number one. And we also have to understand that pollution is everywhere. So whether you are in the AC, as I'm in the AC now, or you're on the road, there is always pollution and there, there's always bacteria and viruses everywhere. So for me, it is important we should take our shower first thing in the morning, and then of course before we go to bed. That's me. But I hear people will say, like you have said, they enjoy. I don't have to take my bath in the evening. I've taken it in the morning. So it's personal, but we also have to realize that your personal hygiene can affect me. I can affect the people around you. So if we put that at the back of our mind, we realize that. Personal hygiene is not just for yourself, but for others around you. So for me, we should take a bath twice a day, if possible thrice. Okay, now, what is the, um, what's the proper way to actually train our nails and also to keep them healthy? When what's you the look proper at way to nails? treat our nails? To train our to nails, to trim it, yes, and maintain good nail hygiene. Number one. For me, we must watch everything we have. For example, for myself, if I want to do vegetable, I don't just wash with water. I put um, vinegar in it just to make sure that everything, especially when it has to do with the, um, the chemicals that have been used, to make sure that my vegetables are completely clean. For my tomatoes, my, my tomatoes, I sometimes I wash them not a lot. I wash with my sponge and a little bit of soap. So because of the pollution we have on around and also the chemical that is being used to preserve these meals, I believe that when we are, before we add tomatoes or pepper, even our fruits to put inside the water, wash with a bit of soap and water, and then rinse very well. That way we keep our, those things clean. And then we should also cook our meals very well. Cook our meals very well. These days, I hear that, uh, I don't know if you have heard about it, when people are eating uh, beef, they have medium rare, they have rare, and all of that, and they have mm -hmm. blood in it. That is one way of transmitting diseases. We must cook our meals very well, cooked properly, and cooked very well that, even if we are heating up our food, we must make sure that when we heat up our food, that if we, we, number one, we do it with slow, with very low heat, so that the heat can gradually get into our meal. And by the time it's, a, it's warm, everything will be warm. So it is okay. important that food is cooked properly. And meal preparation, our meals, uh, our food or ingredients are cleaned very well. Um, before we let you, I'd like you to talk about um, body odor and mouth odor. That's one thing a whole lot of people, <laughs> even adults so far. In fact, sometimes when you get into the bus in the morning, you're literally <laughs> holding your breath because a whole lot of... And, and sometimes I try to wonder, is it that they don't have money to buy even the least um, roll-on or something? But what are the preventive methods for those that have these issues 
that they can use to prevent it or kind of reduce it to a minimum for those that are already having it. Let's talk about that body odor. Because like you have said, my uh, uh, John, you are thinking that uh, they have to use um, odor. But what is the cause of body odor? Sweat by itself does not smell. But the challenge we have is that when there's a multiplication of bacteria that breaks down the sweat, then there's body odor. That's the thing. Because you do know that some people, they sweat, they don't smell. And there's some people who sweat and they smell. But the thing we have to understand is that body odor happens when bacteria on the skin break down protein molecules within the sweat. Once it breaks down in within the sweat, then body odor happens. So the first thing I believe we need to do, so we need number one, pay attention to those places that causes body odor. For example, our armpits, in between our legs. And unfortunately, a lot of us don't understand that. We need to pay close attention to those areas when we are taking our back. And even for our young children, even for children, when we are, when we are teaching them, it's like, um, raise your armpit, wash your armpit, we tell them. And the reason why that is, is to know, and when you, after you wash your armpit, what you do is even check to see that you are not smelling. So the, that's what is important. So they need to, some people will just back up and go. But we need to be very deliberate about our armpits and between our legs and then our body folds, like under our breasts for us that are ladies. And then for the men, between their legs, lift up their little penis and clean properly. So those are the areas where there are, we, uh, those, uh, those smells come up. Now for mouth odor, Mouth odor is the same thing. Now, people don't know how to truly wash their, their mouth or brush their mouth or brush their teeth. <coughs> we just go this way. We're not supposed to go horizontal, we're supposed to go vertical. We go and very gently and not to be in a rush. Take care, we, we figure out, we pay attention to the gums uh, up and down. And then the part of our, our the molars, we must get there. And then we must wash our tongue. When we wash our tongue and wash, back and, and wash between the teeth, then that is one way of preventing mouth odor. The second way is flossing. We don't have a culture here to floss. We have to get not too thick, but get the, uh, the floss, it's like a tiny rope, and put it between our, our teeth to remove those plaques within our, our teeth. That is one way to, um, and then use good toothpaste. There's so, thank God now there's there's so many to, uh, two places uh, two places we have uh, in the market in the market places now where they talk about even taking care of black taking care of cavities. Those are some of the ways. And then we must use deodorant. Very important. We must use the deodorant and we must also use body spray. And then for our mouth, let's always carry a bit of uh, uh, mint. We must carry our meat, especially when you have been quiet for such a long time. Oh. And be focused. Make sure. Be conscious of yourself. Sometimes I, for myself, when I want to talk, I quickly go like that. <laughs> yeah. So that if there's anything that is going around, I can keep it in the meat or yeah. gum. Chew yeah. some gum just to keep that area f uh, fresh. So just Thank some you of so this. very much. Thank you so very much. Um, Mrs. Yemi Ojo Aromokudo, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a very busy person, but thank you for the devoted thank time you, you're giving to thank us you. this morning. Thank and you. even as we start, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Pleasure. Ma. Have a lovely thank day. Thank yeah. Thank okay, you. so God we'll bless. be going for the yes, Ma. Have a lovely day. So we'll be going for this short break on World of Marble, and you also have the opportunity to see our comedy show coming up soon. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, it's the family and values. You have heard it, you have, you know, you heard that jingle. It's all about you bringing your families and loved ones for this recording. And it's on Sunday, 4 p.m. at Alfredo um, Lounge and Bar in Amu Ward of okay? So try, invite your husband, your wife, bring your children, come as a family, Come for this beautiful get-together when it comes to comedy. Lots of laughter. 
coming up right in front of you and it will make you to get yourself out of depression also yes you know sometimes we have so many things all up in our hearts but by the time we take one or two jokes here and there you forget them that's just the way it is okay we're back and our doctor is in the house okay and we're still talking about you know our health personal hygiene is <coughs> and you heard it from Yemi Ojo Aramokudu okay but we're going into the medical line as it is right now. <coughs> so I have with me Dr. Christiana Chetitaya <laughs> this woman very special she treated me during COVID don't forget she treated me and I give God the glory for her life and she's a medical personnel medical senior medical officer with um, the legacy primary health center in Kola. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. You look good beautiful. Good morning. Thank you. Good, good morning. morning. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at personal hygiene. Medically, what do you refer to personal hygiene? Okay. Um, personal hygiene, as it is personal, that's to you. It's uh, the way we take care of ourselves. Um, our environment as well because it's part of being uh, personal with our hygiene so it's the way we take care of ourselves generally mm. that's what personal hygiene is all about okay okay now i, I would like us to be specific okay let's now i there's this issue i really want you to address and it has to do with men men find it very difficult to have their bath twice in a day <laughs> for ladies it's very easy but for men, and then they are boxers, okay. they keep repeating. <laughs> how do we, how do wives get to that point of telling? Because sometimes when you tell them, it's like you're insulting them or they, uh, is it I'm not clean enough? And mm -hmm. So now we are talking about personal hygiene. How do we encourage these men? to bat twice. Some of them don't even use roller. They don't use spray. <laughs> yes, a whole lot of them, they don't. Even when you buy and gift them, it's a problem for them to use. Mm -hmm. So how do we address personal hygiene in that narrative? Okay, thank you. That's a very good question. <laughs> <coughs> well, um, for the men, taking care of their boxers, having their baths at least twice a day, I would say the work lies on the woman. Hmm. There's a way you can go about it. In the morning, yes, they would tell you, okay, because they're going out, they'll have their bath. In the evening, there's a way you go around it. The woman can just be like, ah, my dear, let's go and have our bath together. Hmm. Honey, come, let have my bath. <coughs> come and scrub my bath for me, or do this. In that way, they'll be forced to enter into the bathroom. And there's no how they're in the bathroom, Water touches them and they will not want to have their bath. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible if the I man hope is like, lady. That's possible if the man is at home with the, the woman now. Well, yes, when that's possible if the man back. is at home with the woman. <laughs> also, it's possible because you know there's a way, even when they are sleeping, there's this like a itchy kind of mm. way that the body feels. Mm. The man that is conscious of that would definitely enter into the bathroom mm. to have his bath. Because once you have that bath, you'll be able to sleep better. And you have a sound sleep. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. You have a sound sleep. And where the boxers are concerned, you know, most of them, one boxer, five days. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Okay. One boxer, five days. So it's for you to take that boxer away from where it's easily accessible to them. Just soak it inside the water before it comes yes. out from the bedroom. Yes. Take it out of the way and put a clean one on the bed. He has mm. no choice. He will change it. Then, you know, what are the potential health risks when you talk about um, poor hygiene? Poor well, hygiene, potential health risk. One of the very, the major thing is um, skin infection. Mm. Especially for those that put on the same clothes over and over and over again without washing it. Even what, well, the one that is washed. <coughs> not properly rinsed can also cause the same thing because it will be smelly mm. it's on your body you're sweating you are adding to the bacteria mm. from the cloth that's getting on your body so definitely they will have skin infection that's when you get to see different rashes 
and they'll tell you, oh, well, it just came up suddenly, mm. just out, out of the blue, just all of a sudden, and I don't know what to do about it. So personal hygiene, when not properly kept, can cause that. Okay, for someone who, is, who, is, who loves traveling mm -hmm. and you're always on the road, how can such a person maintain personal hygiene? Well, always on the road. Is it public transport? Yes, public places. Public places. Um, it depends on the distance you are traveling on. One thing is washing our hands regularly is one of the ways to keep ourselves clean. And being on a journey doesn't mean that you can't practice that washing of hands. Mm. So many people need to understand that there's water everywhere. Mm. There's water everywhere. Be it the pure water, the one in the sachet, or the bottle waters, or even the one you put in your bag. It's possible to practice personal hygiene even while on a journey. Because you cannot journey without stopping at a point. Mm. You will definitely stop one point or the other and you know you've touched surfaces you've touched the chair you've touched the person next to you wash your hands is one of the ways to curb a uh, passing of infection from one person to the other okay now for someone who love to keep nails how healthy is it uh, keeping the nails it's not a healthy thing to do because the germs grow under the nails mm. and when you leave the nails you allow the accumulation of that germs this same hands is what you use to touch your food the same food you put in your mouth so why keep the nails in the first place so it's wash your hands trim your nails and that's it now we have um you know all these um glue Extension. on nails Extension. that can be used in place of fixing <coughs> that will stay there permanently so once it's glued you go to where you want to go you come back you take it out once you take it out you wash your hands with soap and running water not just washing, washing. but washing with soap and running water okay um i was actually coming to that washing of hands because you kept saying washing of hands what is the proper way of washing hands because i've been to a place and they'll tell you that when you get to a restaurant and they give you water to wash your hands that it's not proper for you to wash it's like getting the germs back into your hands so what is the proper way of washing our hands is it that we should wash inside the bowl and it's common in restaurants they'll give you the same but you wash your hand yeah. you finish eating you still wash your hands there so what is the proper way of washing hands thank you um, that's a very, very good question because washing of hands cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. When you want to wash your hands, you cannot wash into the bowl because you are washing and then putting back mm -hmm. once your hand is inside that bowl. So the proper way is you pour water on your hands, you wet your hands, put the soap, lather it together and then pour the water, let it flow down. Let it flow down. It's either you pour that way or you are under your running water. Your hand goes down because you've washed already. Mm. You don't want it to come back. Mm. So you put it down and then let the water flow. That's, That's, the, proper That's, That's the proper way, proper way, to, way to wash, hands. wash your hands. Okay. Because once you do that and then you wash in between the fingers. Okay. Mm. It's very important. Yes, right. You wash in between the fingers, the back. You lift okay. them together. You wash your thumb up. Okay. Then the nails also very important. You rub it mm. on the palm, the two like that, and then you pour water on it. Mm. That's the way to wash. You it. lather it. Thank, Thank you. you. That's how the medical people before they enter the theater, you see them <laughs> carry their hands like this after they have washed. You know, they rinse it. Now I want to ask. This is a general, you know, um, conclusion, or the uh, how do I put it now? Is a general saying. We're talking about mouth odor. Hmm. I've heard people say, maybe that person's intestine is bad. He needs to go and check his intestine. That's why he or she has mouth odor. Because I, I know someone. This person will wash his mouth. He's a colleague. And be four, five, ten minutes. By the time he opens his mouth to speak, you know to talk to you hi 
forget. And I wonder, but this person is clean, this person doesn't look dirty. You understand what I mean? But yeah. yes, the odor comes in, that smell, mm. and you like want to stay back when he is talking. What could be the cause? You're a medical person, so maybe you can help us and mm. clear the air on this. Okay. Well, for that kind of person, I would say, did he actually brush very well? Okay. It's important. And after brushing, did you rinse with enough water? Sometimes, most of us, we just brush, pour water, spit it out, and then we are gone. No, it doesn't work that way. If you notice, if you don't rinse with enough water, there's a way the mouth still feels. There's a way the mouth feels. And this person, how are we sure that the gums or the teeth does not have um, an issue in there? Probably it needs to see a dentist. There could be a a hole or a tooth cavity somewhere that is still bringing about that odor even with brushing thoroughly. Hmm. It's very possible. How, how many, like, if I want to brush my teeth, uh, do I need to use like five minutes because I'm brushing? No, it depends on the individual. Hmm. You know, there's a way you brush up, down, up, down, mm -hmm. down to the uh, crevices, the, the sides. Yeah. And then the tongue. The tongue is very important. Most people don't wash their tongue. They believe it's, not, it's just for me to wash my teeth. The mm. tongue is part of the mouth. And it needs to be washed also. It's not just the teeth. So if you wash your teeth and you leave the tongue, definitely you will still have an odor. Mm. Because it's coming, the saliva, everything is on the tongue. Mm. And the bacteria are there. They will keep multiplying. If there's no control over it, they will keep multiplying. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are brushing and then the bacteria are going away. Yes, they are in a way, but the normal flora of that tongue, of that teeth, of that mouth is still there to keep the mouth healthy also and everything. But if you don't brush and rinse thoroughly, there will be a multiplication of those bacteria and it can cause multiple odor. Now, there is this myth out there that says, body odor for some people it becomes permanent because when they were babies they were not properly okay. birthed mm -hmm. and sometimes you hear people say when you give birth I, I for ones that we don't myself have experienced it they'll say let's use palm oil with native sponge to clean the baby so that the baby doesn't grow up having body odor and that belief is out there and so some mm. people when the past they'll say oh probably they didn't beat him well, him or how when she was going now. How true is this? And when it comes to beating, there was a time I we brought in, I think, um, a skincare uh, person, and we're talking about using sponge. Some people, there's this argument they'll tell you, don't use sponge always, mm -hmm. use it twice in a you know, everything is out there. But what is the proper method of beating? Okay. First of all, let's debunk that idea of the baby was not baited very well at birth. It's very wrong. Even the practice now is you don't bait a baby hmm. until after 24 hours. Okay. All those um, stuff you see on the body, I tell you, ah, um, I, I can't really remember what they call it. Ah, the baby came with dirt. Mm. How is it dirty? Coming from inside. inside coming from the womb that is where the baby has been living in for the past nine months hmm. feeding and doing all those stuffs so how is it dirty it's more like having shea butter hmm. on your body you know once over time it melts yes that is what is true. on the baby's body hmm. you don't need to wash it off it actually contributes to warmth for that baby so it's not a matter of ah the baby was not thoroughly washed at birth no as the baby grows after 24 hours, you can bait that baby. But that doesn't mean you should now scrub and scrub and scrub. <laughs> Almost Why? The babies can't talk. Hmm. You are punishing them. Hmm. That is and that's why they cry. That's why they cry. They cry so much. That's why they cry. So the, you know, the practice over time as this child grows, you bait in the morning, you bait at night. But not at all times, depending on the weather. If the weather is a cold weather and these children you don't take them out you are always in the house together what are you beating hmm. what exactly are you trying to clean hmm. 
have they been in the mud that you have to clean them so we need to put all those things into into uh, consideration also and then when they start going to school they play around they play with their mates once that child comes back from school please remove the cloth go into the bathroom because that cloth is already sweaty don't uh, put on that same cloth the next day air dry it or you put on a another clean cloth so you by doing this you are curbing body odor because if that child wears that same cloth the next day he plays again bacteria keeps growing mm. underneath the armpit most especially underneath the knee the elbow mm. so all these things once that child comes back from school oh my darling how are you you're welcome back come let's go and have our bath so the bit once they are back from school not necessarily when they are going to bed at night mm. because the sweat is still on them. on them the bacteria is still growing so definitely you are still encouraging body odor like that. So once they come back from school, into the bathroom, have your bath. So it comes body odor that way. Wow. I want to hmm. say a big thank you to Dr. Christiana Ademi Jedidaya. <laughs> I'm sure he's laughing now. <laughs> okay, big thank you to you, Doctor. Um, she's a yeah. senior medical officer at um, Legacy Primary Health Center, Kola. And it's so good to have you. This <coughs> but you. your final word and advice to our viewers at home on this topic. Okay. Final word on this topic. Just as I have been saying since I've been here. Wash your hands at all times. When you are inside your house, you enter into the toilet, you use the toilet, wash your hands. You want to make food, wash your hands. You go out, you come back, wash your hands. Everywhere you meet yourself, make sure you wash your hands because the hands is what we use in touching everything. And that is where the germs grow. Once we touch a surface, it gets transmitted. So wash your hands at all times. Thank you. You wash it thoroughly, properly, rinse mm. it like this downwards. Thank Don't you wash it in the basin. <laughs> wash it like this and rinse it front, back. Do like this. And you now carry it like this outside. <laughs> like the medical like people. <laughs> you know, like a <laughs> <an> egg. <laughs> <laughs> also don't forget mm. that you know after the the fight and the battle and understanding of covid i want to believe that any layman who enter the house the first thing you do is off your clothes bam go and wash your hands even if you know not want bait that time wash your hands before you go to the kitchen to pick anything from the refrigerator hold anything from inside the house the first thing you do is wash your hands joy yes it's important to wash your hands and to our restaurants out there please try and put the the dish wash somewhere because for those of you that give people water to wash their hands <laughs> and you still keep the same water for them to wash their hands after eating yeah. that's carrying the bacteria you've washed mm -hmm. back into your system mm -hmm. please they should be proper ways so that we help one another and you know the thing is it's very important because you, you you just discover that children keep having body odor and you're asking where is this coming from so it's important as parents personal hygiene is key we cannot emphasize it the doctor has said it constant washing of hands let's teach our kids to brush properly and bad properly so that they don't grow up having body odor because sometimes if you enter the bus for those of us that leave the house very early what we experience <laughs> on the road sometimes you just have to hold your you know hold your yeah. breath and and just refuse to talk because the thing is is really out there and please it is very important we have to don't forget um, to join us tomorrow on Family and Values. My name remains Joy Abu. Thank you. Okay, Joy has said it and I don't need to repeat it. But please, if you must do anything, try and be clean. Amen. Your boxers, one a day. One a day. You can afford it. You are rich. You are blessed. That's why you are the man in the house. And if you are not married, cultivate that habit now before you get married so that your wife will not say, oh, God, wait in this smell. On that note, I want to say a big thank you to all and sundry, everyone watching us all over, from Lagos to Abuja, all over Nigeria, outside Nigeria, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. We appreciate you and we love you. On behalf of all my crew here, 
and myself will say have a beautiful day as you celebrate the first day in the month of February. Happy New Month once again. See you tomorrow.